Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much. So I have not spoke on this subject for a long time on the vineyard. Um, but I used to speak on it regularly. But I've never given a talk like tonight, in which case I actually give you some ins and outs of how I do the work. So if I weren't me, I would totally be at this talk, um, especially if I were a medium or very interested in this work. Uh, as Beth had said, my book is in the back. I'd mentioned this earlier. I wrote a book, Some Dogs Talk. It's a children's story. But um, it really describes how these uh, mediumship communication works, and you can use it not only for animals, but for people, loved ones on the other side, everything. In the very back of the book is a real fun part. I have a friend that he's like, I just read the back. Is that OK? I'm like, I love you enough that just that you read the back is fine. And the back is some really juicy bits on um, the language that I use throughout in a more detailed look at how a medium or a psychic receives their information. I want to do two plugs. One is for my next talk on uh, February 25th, right here. It is at 5 o'clock also, and it's going to be on empaths and sensitives. It's going to be very helpful for anyone that deals with those situations themselves, because there's so many people that are uber sensitive, but also maybe some of you that might work with non-vocals. It's helpful for non-vocal communication as well. Um, the other plug, you won't believe this. You'll be like, why is she talking about this? I started Love MV, a, a small grassroots group on Martha's Vineyard. And when I went for my walk today, I found a balloon that someone had probably let go into the air, and it came down as trash. So I'm just asking you, please do not let your balloons go. So. All right, so what I do is I'm going to tell you a lot, and I won't edit. And you're in here. So if spirit comes through, I will deliver messages to you. If you don't want a message, because I am just giving you what they give me to say, you can like cross your arms or just say, no, thanks. <laughs> and that's fine. So what I want to do is actually do a little bit of uh, giving you some definitions. I, and I have to let you know, what I do is I'm, <laughs> I, I, I do this work as I do a treatment sessions. I'm doing healing work on uh, treatments again and reads on the vineyard. And I do it when I'm in here. I have one foot in their world and one foot in our world. But when you see me on the street, a lot of people are like, oh, no, here she comes. <laughs> I totally am Constance, the shopper mom, doing her thing in the third dimension like the rest of us. And I had to do that at a very young age, because when I was little, I used to have experiences. And then I would talk about them, and people were like, what? And I really quickly learned, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say everything that I'm experiencing or what's happening to me. Because I didn't have the proper language. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I really got the language of, oh, astral projection, oh, astro you know, uh, distant viewing or psychic insight and all these things. So now that I do, I'm, I'm feeling like, oh, now, whew, I know who I am. But I just want you to know that when I'm out and about, I'm not working. You're not paying me. You're not coming to me as a client. I'm not working, so I'm totally not looking. Plus, I think it's rude. So, and you don't really, uh, once you agree to see, then I can see, in essence. So I want to throw out some definitions to you. And um, just so that we can be on the same page. And perhaps you know some of these terms, but I'm just going to give them to you anyway. So as a psychic, a psychic uh, is, uses this. The word psychic comes from the word psyche, meaning soul, because it's soul communication and soul connection. And really what they're capable of doing, or what we're capable of doing as a psychic, is using all those clear words, clear uh, voyant, clear sentient, clear cognizance. So it's, to put those in layman's terms, it's the ability to see images in another, from another dimension or to hear words from another plane. So it's seeing, hearing, feeling, and smelling even. We get a sense of smell. And also, uh, we also get, this is, I'm like laughing, because right now Spirit's like giving me a hard time. And I'm like, can you just let me finish this? And then I'll get to you. So, um, and then it's also a sense of even taste can come through for a psychic. When we get that information on a, as a psychic, what happens is, is that we're usually reading information for a person. So we're getting it off a person, or we're giving it, reading a, a situation or a room or something like this. We use these um, abilities. And I was just born this way. It's like in my astrology, like, ooh, you're a psychic. And you're supposed to teach about it. And I'm like, OK, great. And by the way, you're a medium and a channel. All right, so what a medium does then is a medium is the one that communicates with the other realms. And 
with Spirit. And the way that works is um, I tune in to that realm. I'll get more detailed in a minute on that. I tune into that realm and I become the messenger. So I get information from them, pass it along to you, take your information, go back to them, but they're in the room too so they can hear you. So it's this back and forth and I'm delivering messages as a medium. When I channel, that's a whole nother thing. Channel, that term is sometimes there's trans channels, which just like they fall asleep or Edgar Casey would go into a sleep state and then give information. I've channeled as well, but I don't go into a trance channel where I don't remember what's happening. I actually hold the energy in my body of the being that wants to deliver in or, or information to whomever I'm speaking to. When that happens for me, um, when that happens for me, I rarely do that. Sometimes I'll do it in a talk session. I did it, uh, I think, years ago in Oak Bluffs. What came through, I just couldn't help it, so I did. When I do healing sessions, I have two beings that come through and they ask to use my body. I trust them explicitly, so I do let them. One is this beautiful Asian man, but when I hold his energy, don't laugh, I tend to drool because I can't hold the energy so easily while I'm working it, and he's constantly smiling. And the other one is this big, beautiful, um, dark-skinned woman who's just... Oh, she's so cool. So if you ever came for a healing session, those two might come out. Other than that, I don't usually channel because um, I, I like to be in my own body. I'm like, you can just give me the information and I'll pass it along. But why do spirits channel through us is so that sometimes as a medium, because we're getting messages, sometimes I say it's kind of like psychic charades. As we're getting messages, if we muck it up, they're like, you know what, let me just say it. So let me just slip in, share your body and deliver the message directly through you. So that's why sometimes the channeling happens. So I want to backtrack. There's a couple of other ways in the psychic experience that I can get information. And I'm not alone. I know there's some people in here that have these abilities as well. So all the clairs, like seeing, feeling, and it's physical feeling, and it's emotional feeling, and it's um, smelling and tasting, those are all similar to our own senses, but on an inside, internal level that they happen. There's this other one called claircognizance, and that is intuition. And what irritates me is that some mediums or some psychics use that word synonymous with all the others. And it's not really synonymous because claircognizance, intuition, is actually um, getting the information without the use of reason. And with my work in parapsychology, I've realized that actually we need reason to sort out, oh, I just heard this message and here, let me give it to you. So I actually encourage mediums to use the right vocabulary when they're explaining and, and exp having their experience. Another thing that happens as empaths in the world today, people that get their information by sharing the same situation with someone that they're reading or someone that they're working with or maybe mothers or fathers do it with children, bless you, is that they, um, they share the information and the empath will take it on as their own. They'll feel it as if it's their own. So maybe some of you are in your workplace and you're like, oh, I feel like, ugh. And it's because you're picking up the emotion of maybe some of your coworkers. And so you share that emotion and then you're like, wait a minute, I, it's not me that's irritable and irritable. It's, who is it? It's you. Oh my God, it's you. What are you going through? Another way empaths get information is by intellectual empathy, which means you can go into someone's energy field and figure out how they intellectually uh, came up with a, a problem or a situation. I use this on my kids a lot. My kids, they'll be like going, you know what I mean, mom, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, totally don't know what you mean. And then I'll go in their brain and I'll go, oh, I see what you're saying. So it's a little bit of a mind reader, but it is a thing that we can do and use and, and are capable of. Another thing that I actually discovered, which didn't have a word, it's in my book, is called shared sensory experience. And this is when, as a, a psychic, when I go in to the person and I have the experience with them as in the moment that they're having them. I discovered this on my own by fluke. My dad, we, we went out through OB and all this stuff when my kids were little and my parents were visiting. And um, we couldn't find my son. I was like, oh my God, can't find my son. And my dad looked at me. And my favorite thing is when people say, hey, just try this. And then I'm like, OK, let me try it. And then it works. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. Is he said, why don't you just see through his eyes where he's at? And I was like, whoa. So I closed my eyes. 
and I immediately saw him in the game room playing a, a racing car game. Now, he wasn't even supposed to be anywhere near the game room. He was supposed to be. But I was like, oh, my God, he's playing the game room. I know, and I looked around through his eyes, and I knew exactly where he was. For me, it was cool because I wasn't um, doing remote viewing. I, did, I wasn't looking in the distance and going, where on the island is he? Oh, I see him at the game room, aerial view. There he's playing his game. I was in my son looking to see what his surroundings were. So my work on the planet is I love to discern and ascertain how am I getting the information and how is it that other people get the information. So for me, it was quite fun. I went to a medium. Mediums do go to mediums. Mediums go to psychics. We just love it. We're like, what the heck? Why not? Let's see how you do. And I went, <laughs> I went to this medium. She said, I have a woman in the room, and she's, she had a stroke. And you helped her through the stroke. And she claims she's your sister. And I was like, yes. She's, uh, she's here. She goes, no, no, this woman is on the other side. And I said, no, no, my sister, who had the stroke, is here on the planet. She goes, no, 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 this one's on the other side. I said, so I'm starting to look in astral, because I this is when I teach, I look, where are they seeing? Astral realm, where astral is, is where loved ones that have crossed over, and also, this is where you gotta hold it, because this is like, could be mentally trippy, and higher thought projections of people that are living. So a lot of times in sessions, I've had mothers or fathers step in, and they're not on the other side, they haven't crossed over, they're here, but they just have stuff to sort with their kids. But it's also through that astral plane that we communicate with animals and, believe it or not, trees and each other on a, like, why isn't my husband getting it? Why, honey, in my mind sitting in meditation, I really need you to see what I'm saying. And then next thing, next thing I know, he goes, hey, I, you know, I finally, I figured out what it is and I'm really seeing things differently. When you speak on that level to your loved one through that connection of the astral, there, things can start happening. So back to the medium in the room. She goes, no, 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 this woman is on the other side. And I said, listen, I have only helped one person through a stroke. It's my sister and she's alive. She, once again, she was like, no, this one's on the other side. And I'm like, okay, listen, how do you know whether or not they're on the other side? How can you t discern when you see spirit, whether they're on this side or on the other side? And she said, it's very easy. They all line up on this side of you when they're on the other side when, they're, when they've passed. And I said, can I just mention, I don't think that's actually working for you today. So that was another joke, thank you. <laughs> so the, the same thing happened to another me with another medium and I got to thinking, this is really interesting because when some mediums train, they sit there and they go, okay, let's set up the basics. And they just deliver information from the loved one. And then they say, okay, if you're on this side for me, then you're living. And if you're on this side for me, then you're, you've passed over. But I have to tell you, spirit can have a heyday with that. I have had situations when I've given um, mediumship reads for people, and before the session, I'll say, okay, everybody that's on you know, the, the father's side of the family, all stay on the right. Everybody that's on the mother's side of the family, all go on the left. And then I'll see them literally in the room by the person, and they'll be going back and forth, and I'll be like going, stop, stop, stop. No. I want you to know, when you see a medium, mediums don't have to... Uh, they need, I, what I want mediums to know is that it's not a one-way conversation. You can interact with spirit. And you, in this room, oof, that talk to loved ones, that talk to guides on the other side, guides are maybe people that you've had incarnations with or spirit guides, if you will. And it's that same level of astral that you can connect with them. When you talk with them, it's an interaction. I found in my work with parents and loved ones that have crossed, oftentimes they come forward initially attached to the psychology and the personality that they were in this incarnation, whether to get a message across or to get information that has to do with the relationship and some healing to take place. After a while, or sometimes, that spirit from the other side actually shows up as an evolved soul. And I have to tell you, I've worked with several parents that have lost kids. And they're, the, the parents are like, that doesn't sound like my kid at all. And I, I work for spirit. So I go back and I say, why is it 
I th I'll show you a trick. What I do is I throw light at it and I light at them and the situation and I say, are you real? And they'll say, yes, I am. And I'll say, why are you sounding so wise? And they'll say, because I'm evolved. I'm more evolved. And then I'm like, give me proof of who you are. And they're, it's, they, then they throw out some specific, specific proofs. So I, what I do is I work with, for me as a medium, different mediums do things differently. Some mediums I know they talk through their own guides. They work with guides that come around them and they do this. What I did before you all came is I said, all right, here's the deal. I'm going to come in. And if there are messages to be have, have, then to pass along, then I want the brightest and the lightest beings to come forward and make it easy, smooth, and you know, let's get on in. So, so spirit's like, okay. And I wish this room was bigger because you guys are crowded, not just in the physical, but there's like so many spirits around in here. So what that feels like for me is squish. And what it might feel like for you is some of you a squish. Like it might feel like the, some of the chairs are too close together. And um, sometimes we put out wishes that, oh, I hope so-and-so comes through and they can give me this proof that this is who they are. How do I do it as I pay attention? Keen attention. It's intention and it's love. I really, it's, yeah, 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 it's love for you and your loved ones. But it's also, like, I work for, I'm going to use the G word, I work for God. And I'm like, I trust you, and you bring it on, and if I'm meant to do this work, keep my ego out of it, keep me clear, let me help. And I only go high. When mediums or psychics or channels work, we raise our vibration. So we have to bring our awareness up really high. And the higher we go then the cleaner it becomes. Because once you get through this astral realm, which is where loved ones that have crossed over, that's where you reach into them, or, or um, uh, higher thought projections of people that are living. It's fascinating work. Once you go beyond them, then there really are angels. Totally different frequency, totally different way that they communicate. The angelic realm, they've not walked on the planet, they are light. And they're, they're mostly uh, communicate by claircognizance, although I've channeled some angels, like with vocal channeling, it was a trip. And um, one of the things they told me, which I'll pass along to you, is when we manifest, angels are here to help us we'll do our work on the planet. And what we need to do is line when our heart and our head are in alignment for what we desire and if it's for the highest good. But the heart and head have to be in alignment. Then the angels can fuck in and work with us on it to make it happen on the planet. So, um, and then to me, God consciousness, <laughs> when I hear it, it's so high. It's like this beautiful, oftentimes I'll weep. So back at the medium. So I'm with the medium and she's like, I said, hey, let me ask you, I'm starting business again. And what do you think? And blah, blah, blah. And she goes, no, not this. Cause I'm looking at spaces to work out of. She goes, no, no, wait, I have St. Michael in the room. I have Archangel Michael in the room. And I was like, okay, really? And I'm going, I don't feel him. In my head, I'm thinking, I don't feel like Archangel Michael in the room. She goes, yes, I have my Archangel Michael. And he's feeling, yes, yes, this will be really good stuff. So not only do I look in the room, and I don't feel Archangel Michael, because when you feel angels, you feel angels. I decided to look into her psychic space. I couldn't even find him in her psychic space. So then I looked in the angelic, and he wasn't even in the angelic. And I was like, wow, she's giving me false information. <sighs> If I wasn't me, I would have known it wasn't true because it didn't ring true in my heart. I didn't feel it. When you feel loved ones near and a, and a medium is working with you, when you feel angels with you in the room, you feel them. It's palpable. So I want to tell you that. Now, let me say one other thing when working with mediums that I, this is what some of this was, this talk about tonight. And then there's a, like, there's this like, ooh, can you come talk to me? Um, when I, Work in that medium experience, connecting to loved ones that have crossed over, because it's in astral, I've learned very quickly to say, um, <laughs> you're gonna hate me for this. They don't hate me, they understand. I just wanna talk to this person's dead. I only want their loved ones that have crossed. Because what'll happen otherwise is sometimes, get, get this, a medium, not knowing what they're doing, can tune into you and get, wait for it, a projected fear. And they might read that as their, your future, wrongfully. They might say, oh, I see you, you're doing this, or oh, I'm getting such da 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 And it's not the true person at all. It's a, either a projection, a psychic projection, because they're reading the psychic space around you. They're either getting a projection 
or an interactive memory. We can have an interactive memory and they're picking through memories as a psychic too and then as a medium. If I have a loved one, a real loved one that has crossed that won't talk because sometimes we get loved ones that have not talk, spoken and that is the answer. Like, oh, I've got your dad. I remember a long time ago, I was like, yeah, I got your dad. He's not saying a word. And the woman said, that's so him. He just never spoke, never said much. But for if I wanted to get messages from the dad to the person, did you know that you signed up for mediumship psychic 10, class 102? <laughs> so if I wanted to get messages from the dad, what I would do is actually ask for a medium for the medium. You can get mediums in the astral realm to come through and give messages for the dad to help me communicate with the dad. Or I can do a psychic read on the dad. This is really good information for those mediums out there. Or I can do a psychic read on the dad so that we can get to know each other more. And I could say, this is what your dad's like. This is what he did for a living. This is how it feels. And then all of a sudden, the dad kind of begins to trust me. And then we can chat. I have to admit, names are not my forte. I am usually like, people are like, well, what's their name? And I'll, I'll have glimpses of names because they're on a high frequency and they're a fast vibration. I know some mediums that are really good at names, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not really, like, maybe I'll work on that. But mostly it's like, this is, they present. They're like, this is who I am. I know it immediately. The other day um, I worked with someone and it was, I had a dad, a grandfather, a grandmother and a mom. And there was no rhyme or reason where they were. It's just the knowing. I just knew, oh, this is what it is. So I feel like I want to see, are you here for question answer? Or are you here for mediumship? Like, do you want me to come out and tune in? <laughs> There's like, yeah, tune in. Oh, you guys are so cute. You guys are so cute. We initially had it in a circle because it's so much easier for me to work in a circle. And then, um, and then but we're, uh, we're not working in a circle because it was too small and squishy. So um, let me just do this. At the same time I'm talking and I'm saying, and they're saying, make sure you tell them. So two things. One, because I work empathically, which means I also tune in to you, like to get stuff from you, and I just go all over. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I studied journalism in college, you know, consider the source, but get the answer somehow. So I'm like, all right, am I going to angelic? Am I going to God? Am I going to spirit guides? Am I going to loved one? Am I going right to your soul? Do a lot of soul reads. So what I'm doing at this time is I'm dousing you all in prayer. And I'm also saying that because I work empathically, um, one of my biggest things is I cannot go work with someone that's had um, recreational drugs in the past 48 hours, because I'll pick it up and then I'll be like, whoa, can't come down, I can't, I'm not, I'm high and I'm not coming down for days. It's really hard on my, my being on, and on my spiritual continents. Some of the stuff that I get through is highly personal. And, oh God. So, and so if I'm feeling like it's that, then what I'll do is I will, uh, Try not to pinpoint. So, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm, um, yeah, let me at least ask that. Does anyone have any questions on what I said? All that stuff. I believe now in this day and age, actually well before now, this is part of who we are. We're body and soul. And so sometimes it's easier to say, no, you can't have those. I, I'm not going to say, well, they are kind of gifts, but I actually think they're talents because I worked mine like, oh, this might have been what I was born with, but it is a skill that you have to really work on to be better. So, um, so I, I believe that sometimes people are like, no, 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 no. Where in essence to me, all of us, more fully alive, is body and soul. And so part of it are these mystical experiences. I have some amazing mystical experiences. And I bet if I tossed it out to the room, you guys do too, especially if you let yourself have them, walking through the woods or have, you know, just like talking to nature and communing with nature. So sadly, I think that they, uh, sometimes those things happen like, oh, it was the devil or if it was evil, because that's their trip. Now, I actually don't give the devil or evil no time. I don't even know that I, I mean, ah! believe in it. I don't, I'm like, cause I'm all just all God and us and evolves people. So it was a struggle I went through as a young child. Cause I had told one of my first six, uh, visions was a, a mother Mary vision and got information. And then I told, told the priest and he kind of poo it. He thought it was more of my making it up. Well, the imagination is actually in a way, an organ of perception, especially for psychics or mediums or mystical people. So I think the thing is, is that what I end up doing is going 
Um, yeah, I love uh, Edgar Casey's stuff. I've been to Aerie, but what I end up doing for me is going, it's you guys. You know, I just right. abandon myself and say, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm just going to, whatever you ask of me, which is why that I think God can rely on me so much or whatever you want to call it, great spirit, but it can rely on me so much because I just abandon myself too. It's interesting because, um, you know, I just, I know there's a lot of people that have a hard time with all that. And even like, you know, dowsing or pendulums or tarot cards, those are all just tools for divination. And I'll throw some cards if I'm working with kids because they don't like to know that I can actually just read them straight on. I remember I was like the fun girl at the prom party one year a long time ago. And I threw cards because it was just, it was too freaky otherwise for the kids. But, um, but I, I think I'm hoping that we're coming out of that that phase because it goes by the way of the witches and whatever when it's just really to me it's about us being fully human and because especially because when your heart's open so much when you're starting to commune with nature and realize oh my god I can you know even um Hindu mystics would talk to rocks and mm -hmm. and and um, bhakti yoginis know about this so uh, I think that once we realize and embrace fully who we are we're all mystics we're all capable of this and anything that says no don't do you know you follow your heart and if your heart is like all right this is not hurting anyone or anything so what I've learned if I've learned anything is that some people have stronger talents or in certain areas like I don't ask me to find missing kids yeah or people no I don't I don't want it I'm thankful that I don't do that work it's not my forte medical mediumship not my forte um, but but uh, what I would encourage you to do is what I did is I'm scared I was pretty I'm scared but bring it on you know just keep me clear keep my ego out of it and I will to will thy will and bring it on because for whatever reason that's it's, you've got that and it never goes away. You just shut it off. I think we shut it off to protect ourselves. And that's what time, a lot of times, there's a lot of people over here that are like, I don't want to feel. <laughs> if I were to, like, I don't want to feel. It's too overwhelming. And so um, we shut it down. And what I'm encouraging you to do is not shut it down. Okay, so there's, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it like this. And then if I get pulled in, because um, I'll just, it's kind of, if I get pulled in, I'll get pulled in. So here's the deal. There's some people in this room that needs to know about the sensitivity. There's some people in this room to, that need to know that not all the thoughts in your head are your own. You're actually having communication. So what I invite you to do in those times, because you are not alone, you are not crazy, you are not, you say, whose voice is this? Now, Ugh, I hate having to reveal this. Say it anyway. Okay. There's something in my astrology that says past lives bleed through. When uh, an astrologer on the island told me that, I was like, yay, because sometimes I have these thoughts that are not very nice. And I'm like, I'm a child of God, <laughs> I'm a spirit being. But I have these other past lives where I was not a good person. And so, of course, sometimes when we have these lives when we're not good, then we're going to have lives when we're really good. And it's all lessons is what I've learned in working with people and working with my own soul. So it's Sometimes we hear voices, and I do need to say this because there's someone in the audience that needs to hear this. Sometimes we hear voices that are not leading, that they, they are leading us astray and they're not nice voices. And you have to discern that. And this is why I'm not walking up to you. You have to discern that, that that is not a voice that you want to listen to. Here's the deal. Sometimes when mediums start or psychic people are on it and everything, it's like anything and everything starts talking to them. And much as there are creepers in this world, there's creepers in astral realm. That's why I go really high. Whenever anyone comes for a read, I say, here's this soul. I'm asking for the highest truth of divine light and love to come through and give me guidance on this person. So a lot of times in the talk, you'll see me go like this because I go really high. So there's someone in this audience that needs to hear that because there's some, you, ang the anger issues that you feel here that tempt you are because you're being misguided and you know exactly who you are. And here's the deal. Sometimes it's like, I need to give this up of the past. I need to let go of it because I need to, I want to step forward and embrace. You would make a great medium, a great medium, but you just have to shift who you're listening to. If you think this is you and you want to touch base with me after this class, after this talk, then you are, uh, you're welcome to step forward to me and just say, hey, I think I, think I could, would like to talk to you. Or you can grab my card in the back. It has my uh, website and my email, stuff like that. That might be easier for you. Um, all right. So, uh, <laughs> so interestingly enough, um, 
I'm also looking at the time. Um, yak, 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 yak. Where am I going? I'm kind of going over here. Um, um, so I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go right up to the person. It's so really easy when you go right up to the person, but I do phone reads, so I can also do this over the phone and I can also pitch in. So I've got a mother on the line who misses you dreadfully, who is like, I'm just like, this person is weeping because of the lost connection. And I'm asking, just, and you're saying, just keep going. I'm like, okay, fine. So I've got mom who just wants me to tune in, who's um, just, uh, I, she's exhausted, mom is exhausted, you're exhausted, you always exhaust yourself because you spread yourself too thin, and she's just weeping about this, weeping, weeping, weeping. And so um, this, is not, uh, this is not one of the, this is someone that wants, uh, so the way this works, and I'm like, what, uh, is that I'm, I'm seeing them with flowers, like they're smelling flowers, picking flowers, and I'm like, are you saying it's a good time to smell the flowers? Are you saying just give her the flowers, give her, give her the flowers? So then I'm asking, um, you know what would be better is if you could just give her the flowers. So I'm just gonna give her the flowers. So sometimes I close my eyes so I can focus in on their world because I don't wanna see the reaction here. Um, wow, oh my God, I'm so, so now I'm just gonna quote. I'm just gonna quote. I'm not going in to say blah, blah, blah. I'm just, here's the deal is, um, I, I'm hearing higher up. I want you to do and say exactly what you hear and see. I just want you to do it. Don't even ask, don't try to direct this, don't try to um, reconcile or conform the messages. I'm like, okay, I thought you're not gonna, okay. Okay, here we go. When I used to do these in a circle, I would tell people oof, that, um, you know, I might be looking at one person, but the message was actually also for someone right across the circle. And so I'm just gonna say this, and maybe it might be helpful if you close your eyes. It seems like, but I'm like, oh, but Constance, it feels like such a cop out on your part. And it's like, no, because you can't stand in front of three people, four people, I'm having you stand in front of four people. So I'm standing in front of four people, five people. You are so spiritually inclined. Why do you belittle that which you know and let others come before you and you put them before you and you cower down? and you cower down and you are so spiritually evolved. You are so far more enlightened than you let on and know. And once you embrace that truth of who you are and what you're capable of, then it's as if you, life becomes so much easier. But the problem is, is you hide behind the shelter of your own ego and kowtowing to another's will. I hope you shut your eyes for that one. That was channeled. That was not me, that was like, we're coming in to talk to you. What I have learned about, can I stop? No, put, stay there. <laughs> what I have learned, normally when I do reads, I don't say what I'm talking, but I'm telling it in this because it's instructional. They're like, stop and just keep talking or you're gonna lose your place. So I go up to go, where was I, gotcha. When I've, when I've learned this before about people that are, they're more evolved or their soul has done so many eons of work and their vibration is so light that they're, they seemingly like angels on the planet or enlightened and their prayer time or their time and dancing with the divine is so evolved. And yet when they, any, their, their vibration is so high and they're they like they exude healing energy and they're just so pleasant to be around and people glom onto them. But when they belittle themselves and say, oh, I don't know, or oh, yes, you're right, when they're not right, it's, it's this person that is the wise counsel. When they belittle themselves, then they kind of like get dust in their auric field or they get dust on their vibration or they take their own self down a few pegs and spirits like I've brought you here to guide forth and bring forth wisdom to others. So this is not about you playing small. This is about you embracing the light that you are. Oof. <laughs> so um, I, you don't need to say I heard that, but I know you heard that. Close your eyes if you want to say with your heart on your hands on your heart. Is it me? Is it me? It's me. So I want to, um, gosh, I'm, here, I'm like, why can't I? And they're like, I told you it wouldn't be normal. It would be different. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to go two more. 
I feel like I want to line you up and then just go, pew, 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 just give you little insights. I'm having a conversation. All right, so trust what you do. All right, so the, the, there's some of you, I've got some fairies in the room. So, and you'll love this, my cousin, this is a hats off to my cousin, he goes, he saw my boots and he's like, what are those fairy shoes? I'm like, maybe, they're vineyard shoes. I think a lot of fairies live on the vineyard and close your eyes if you have a nature calling. You um, walk and talk with the fairies and you need to know that, that you are earthbound nature spirit. You are actually from that realm, so you have lived lifetimes as a nature spirit. And the calling that you know in your heart is true, and that you are supposed to do more environmental work. And where have you been? What are you doing? Why are you running from that? You commune with nature. You have that ability to talk to the trees. You know this. Animals speak to you. They seek you out. Do not deny this. And I can totally, you definitely come see me after this class, because <laughs> You, I have to confirm, yes, it's you. Um, but I'm not going to say it right now because this is um, this seemingly like, how can I say I talk to the fairies and the elves, but you do. So you like so funny with this misnomer of it's so girly. I'm like, no, you're so like nature king. <laughs> I'm over here. And uh, although it can be over there, but I'm over here, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm like, I'm so tired. I'm kind of sick of it. I'm not zooming in on who this is because this is personal stuff coming up. Um, I'm reading a soul. I'm reading a soul. And they're like, oh my God. Um, I'm seeing your tears. I'm seeing your exhaustion. And I'm seeing your incredible patience. And, um, and this ability to Give, 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 give until you've given out so much of yourself that you don't even know who you are. You're like ripped. So here's the deal. I would, I, this, the, the bath time is good. The soaks are good, but you are just not, not of this planet, darling. So this is not your easiest calling to be here now on the planet. I really want you to come to the talk on the 25th. It will help you and benefit you. Um, but you're uh, not from here. So I'm going to give uh, helpful hints on what you could be doing. That's uh, February 25th. And the thing is, is because uh, you're at your wit's end. And so I, I, between now and then, I want you to write down what you really want to be doing in this life, what you really want to be doing in this life, because you're just so desolate and you're feeling alone and you're feeling trapped and you're feeling like I can't take it anymore. And, um, and I would also love to see you after this. See, there's this problem. I want to put my hands on your heart and say you're going to be fine. It's fine. Um, God, it's all soul reads today. It's not really other than that. Mom coming through saying, don't take after me. It's a hard life. So, um, Okay, I'm going to say this. Can I say that? All right, so here's what I want to do. I want to, um, there's a couple ways. When I teach one-on-one -on -one how to connect with your spirit guides or loved ones that have crossed over, it's a, it's a thing I do one-on-one -on -one to open you up to spirit, and I psychically go with you to see what you're seeing and what you're doing. But then after that, I say this is the, part of, the start of a spiritual practice for you. So um, there's, uh, there's those of you that <laughs> know exactly what I'm talking about and know how to do this, but I, I'm really encouraging you. I'll never say you should, but I'm encouraging you to spend more time in spirit because what happens is, is if you did automatic writing, if you like write your part, like is anybody there? And then they'll, they'll, laugh, they'll make you laugh and go, of course we're here. And then you'll write their part and you'll go back and forth and who is this? And you just roll with it. But what I'm saying is, is this is stuff, there's some of you that write, when you can communicate with the spirit realm and there's some of you that walk and talk with the spirit realm. But this is about really getting into who you are as a soul. And this is about really tuning in that there's some of you that have lost loved ones that you want to talk to and you talk to them all the time and I'm here to confirm that yes, you are talking to them. 
when you connect with a spirit guide, though, they're never, they're not the, the they're never going to ask you to do stupid things. <laughs> Stand up in front of the audience and speak about the work. But they're going to ask you to do stuff that might push you, but never in a bad way. And so all I'm saying is, is that there's, um, there's practices that you could be doing at home. I don't think that it's only, mediumship is only for people that want to do it as a career. I think it's great for creativity, for people that, um, want to uh, get some guidance, believe it or not, I do that sometimes, go to spirit to get guidance on my life. Like, what do you think, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I just want you to know that some great ways of doing it are walking meditations or also um, channeled writing and it's automatic writing. So I'm gonna give that out to you. Um, so I want to totally thank you all for coming and feel free to come up or mingle, have some snacks, grab a book. In the back are the, all the Claire's and the um, shared sensory experience and how that works. There's examples that relate to the story, but you could pretty much get through it. My friend, he was so funny. He used it on a bird once because um, we were out in, uh, I don't remember where we were, in Vancouver, three of us, three college chums, and he saw this, this wild bird was going by and he held his hand out and it was using the techniques from the book and he held the hand out calling the bird in his mind to come sit on my, and the bird flew over, perched on his finger. We're all like watching this and then the in the bird and then he was like then he went into shock yeah. and that instant the shock hit bam the bird flew and he was like did you see that did you see that oh my god did you see that and my friend and I are both the medium mystics we're like yeah 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 <laughs> we kept going come on come on and he goes but it works and I'm like of course it works what do you think so anyway I want to thank you for coming and I will definitely do this again in a bigger venue because I really want to get in more so thank you Thank you.